Hi, this is Super Mick Young Yang, and I'm honored and privileged to have an opportunity to uh, meet you guys through uh, this means of uh, video. I've been asked by your leaders to uh, to share with you guys uh, what the gospel is, and so we'll jump right in so we don't waste any time. Uh, if, I, if I had a, to really boil down the gospel message into a sentence, I would put it like this, that it is God reconciling a sinful world back to himself through the work and person of Jesus Christ. Again, it is God reconciling a sinful world back to himself through the work and person of Jesus Christ. And so again, we can stop the video, we can stop there, but I'm sure you guys want me to elaborate a little bit more on that particular sentence. And, the, and, and I'm going to, and, and the way that I'm going to do that is really through a systematic lens. And what I mean by a systematic lens is just kind of give you guys points and give you guys concepts, and hopefully the, the, those points and concepts begin to create in you guys, uh, in for you guys, a uh, space in your minds to begin to think and collect data and know how to categorize it. So the four points is a uh, God, man, Christ response. Okay, God, man, Christ response. The first point, God. So when we think about God, we we need to understand that God is the creator. And when we, we, when we say that God is creator, we're also implying that there is a creator-creation distinction, meaning that he is creator and we are creation. And so because he is the creator, we are accountable to him as that. And not only is he a, the creator, but he is a just God. And, and we see this throughout all of scripture that, that the Bible communicates and co conveys to us God's character, that God is a just God. God is a righteous God. God is upright. And at the same time, on the other side of that same coin, uh, the Bible says that God hates evil. God hates the wicked. God hates the sinner. Okay, So that's important for us to understand. Okay, So again, when we think about God, yes, God is God, but God is also the creator. And because God is creator and we are creation, we are accountable to him. And the second point is man. Okay, Now that we understand God, we also understand man. And man has been created in the Imago Dei. That's just a fancy way of saying that God has created us in his image. And in, in being created in his image, we have been designed by God's uh, creative intent to reflect forth his glory. But because man has fallen and has sinned against God, man stands condemned uh, before God. And so what is sin? Sin, uh, simply put, is the act of treason. It is the act of dethroning God from being God and saying, no, no, I want to be God. So the act of treason could be simply put as this, is that if we as a Hmong people wanted our own country and we uh, created a civil war against the, um, the United States of America, America would send their troops and pound us in a moment, right? Why? It's because we are rising against the nation. In the same sense, God has created us. But being his creation, we have risen against him. We have rebelled against him. And in that rebellion, we have stepped on his glory. And we have said, no, no, no. Not for your glory, God, but for my glory. For our glory. Okay? So that is sin. So that's kind of man's predicament. That's man's situation. That's man's dilemma. And so again, even in Genesis 6, uh, Moses says that man's thoughts are, are sinful and evil continuously. That's all that runs through our minds. And so not only is sin a breakage of a relationship with God, but sin is a, is a nature thing. Sin is a disposition. Sin is a posture that we have uh, in ourselves, that in our nature we are sinful. We are dead in our trespasses and sins, as Ephesians 2.1 says. So it is our nature to sin against God because of, of the fall. And then thirdly, we have Christ. So we have God, man, and now thirdly, Christ. But in God's infinite wisdom and, and infinite mercy and grace, he sent down his son, Jesus Christ. And Jesus is the God-man. So why is it important that Jesus is the God-man? First of all, because we have sinned against an infinite God. And that infinite worth needs to be satisfied. That sin that we've sinned against, or, or the God that we've sinned against, has an infinite worth. 
And in order to repay that infinite worth, we need something that has that same value. Okay? Has that same value. And in a sense, Jesus comes and He is the God-man. And He is God in the flesh. And He holds that same value. And so He substitutes Himself for our place. He sees us as sinners. And because He loves us and because He loves His glory, God's glory... He substitutes Himself in our place and repays the, the, the wrath of God. And He takes on the wrath of God unto Himself. Okay? So that's why it's important that we understand that God is, uh, or that Jesus is, is God. But why is it important that Jesus is man? It's important that Jesus is man as well is so that He can represent us. He can represent us. So we see that the first Adam failed in sin. And that first Adam, He was our representative. He was our head. And so therefore, because He sinned, we sinned. Okay? And so now that Christ come, comes, He is the second Adam. He is the one that is our representative. So that when we put our faith in Him, now we come under His leadership. We come under His headship. We come under His represent, representation. And so because He has satisfied um, the wrath of God, therefore the righteousness of Christ is also now accounted to us in our in our bank account, if you could say. So now that when God looks at us, He doesn't see sinful us, but He actually sees Christ in us. Okay, so Christ becomes a substitute um, through His infinite love for us. So we talked about God, man, Christ, and then now, lastly, it is the response. And in the response, there's two uh, two ideas that we need to understand. The first idea is repentance. Okay, repentance. And so now that we see God for who He is as Creator, and now we begin to see ourselves that we are sinful people, now we're looking for a Savior. And now that we've seen that Christ is that perfect Savior, we are now going to repent. And repent is not merely saying, oh, sorry, right? It's not a lackluster sorry. But repentance is having new eyes to see sin and to see the wickedness, the ugliness, the dirtiness, the filthiness of sin. And it is a turning from that sin. So when we look at the idea of repentance, repentance is a, a one act. But in that one act, two things happen. Okay? So when I'm turning, okay? so when I'm turning from this side, I am turning from, in this one act of turning, I am turning from sin. And I'm also simultaneously turning to Christ. And that's what happens with repentance. Is that we turn from sin and we turn to Christ. So repentance then simply is a changing of mind. It is a changing of mind. It is now that the Holy Spirit has awakened my eyes to see God as creator and a just God. And to see myself clearly as a sinner. And to see Christ as the perfect and beautiful Savior. Now, therefore, there is a heart transformation that hates sin. Okay, True repentance cannot come if there is not a true hatred of sin. There is a true hatred of sin and a true affection, a true love for Christ. Okay, And then secondly, in that re next to repentance is faith. Now, what is faith? Faith is a trusting in what Christ has accomplished. It is trusting that the cross is sufficient to wash away my sins, to wash away the filth that I have committed against God, the treason, the rebelliousness against God, that the, the work of the cross is sufficient, is enough to wash that away. But also, too, that the resurrection is the power that now death, has no power to hold me. I don't have to fear death now because I've seen Christ defeat, that the grave is empty and that Christ has defeated death. And therefore, now that I am in Christ through faith, um, that I also will be risen as well in the last day. And so therefore, faith is a vehicle that the Holy Spirit uses to unite me with union with Christ. So now that again, when God looks upon me, He doesn't just see Mikyam. He sees Mikyam, yes. But He also sees Christ 
living in me. And so he sees the righteousness of Christ um, exuberating forth from me because me, Christ and I are united in that sense, okay, through faith. Uh, <clears throat> and so uh, when we think about the gospel, we're thinking about God, man, Christ, and then the proper response to that. And that faith is going to lead us now, not to be lackadaisical, not to just be, well, you know, now that God has saved me, now I don't need to live a righteous life. No, But actually, faith then is the one that's, is the, the vehicle that the Holy Spirit uses to stir in me an affection to desire to live a righteous life uh, through the power of the Holy Spirit for the glory of God. So I hope that this this short video has been helpful, again, to create um, categories, to create buckets in our minds so that as we think about the gospel, we know how to store that information. And not only just information, but I hope that this video also then stirs in us an affection for the beauty of the gospel and the beauty of God's infinite wisdom in allowing us to be a part of this and, and coming and saving us through the work and person of Jesus Christ. I pray that your, uh, your joy in Christ will grow more. I pray that your affections in Christ will grow more. And I pray that your love for the church, because you love Jesus, will grow more. And that we would truly be the church and, and proclaim the good news and make disciples of all nations. It has truly been a blessing and a joy to, to spend this time with you guys. I pray that it has been helpful. Look forward to hear. Uh, what God is going to do through this and through the local church that you're at. God bless you guys, and I love you guys.